Hello and welcome into this week's edition of the Arkham Menard Series Rewind Show. I'm Garth Allen. This is Racing News Now. And today we're talking about race number two for the main Arkham Menard Series and race number one for the Arkham Menard Series West for 2022. And they were one in the same races. A combo race at the Phoenix Raceway, Avondale, Arizona, the General Tire 150, the now tradition for the Arkham Menard Series to run a combo race in the spring at Phoenix in conjunction with the spring weekend for the Cup Series and Xfinity Series. Not a bad race overall. I said this on the uh, the, the live post-race show that we did Friday night following the race. Not a bad race, at least by Phoenix standards. Was it great? No. I wouldn't put it up there as being like an all-time great race. It wasn't bad, though. I was thoroughly entertained by the Sammy Smith-Taylor Gray battle throughout most of the race. And of course, one of them ended up fading late in the race, but we had other contenders come into the picture late in the race, namely Daniel Dye, Raja Carruth, Jesse Love was in the mix all night long. We had some names up there battling for it, and most of them are actually names that we haven't seen a lot of in recent years in the Arkham Menard series. Kind of a new crop of faces coming to the forefront in Arca. Of course, they're all names that we have seen here or there, mainly in East and West so far. It's not like they're new names that we've never seen before in the Arkham Menard series, but they're not necessarily names that we're used to seeing up front week in and week out in the Arkham Menard series for the past few years. So it's good to see that new crop of drivers rising to the top now as the former crop is moving on now to trucks and Xfinity and so forth in the Corey Himes, the Ty Gibbs of the world, and so forth. So, good to see some new names running up front in the Arkham Menard series as we head into the 2022 season. Now, like I said, not a bad race. Not a great race, but not a bad race. Good by Phoenix standards. Lots of cautions, though. Nine caution flags for a total of 46 laps. Most of those were single car spins. Notably, main Arkham Menard series championship contender Greg Von All spinning at lap 11 and actually ending his night. Not a great start to the season because if you remember, he was out early at Daytona as well. Starting off that full season bid for that 35 team with a couple of DNFs, putting themselves in a bit of a hole. I think they can come back from it because they've showed a lot of speed in the first couple races of the season before they had their issues and in every race that they ran last year. That team has speed, so it'll be interesting to see what they can do going forward when they can actually finish a race. Also, Arkham Menard Series West Championship contender, Austin Herzog, the new driver of the number 16 car this season, he spun on lap 74 actually to bring out the brake caution. Now, let's talk about the final caution of the night, lap 148 that sent us into overtime between the 9 of Tanner Reef and the 13 of Todd Souza. They made some contact coming off of turn 2, entering the back stretch with a couple laps remaining. Souza ends up bouncing off the wall and then coming back out and bouncing into the nine car. Something seems to have happened here that I'm not sure completely got relayed with the TV replay because Todd Souza very clearly was not happy with this incident. They came down the front stretch and Todd Souza turns Tanner Reef. I'm usually not one to take sides to say this was intentional or this wasn't intentional. I leave it up to your interpretation. But I think this one was very clear, even with the, the angle from behind the car. You couldn't really see his hands. I think this one was very clear. Todd Souza very intentionally spun Tanner Reef. I'm not 100% clear why, though. I don't think we got the full picture on what happened there on the backstretch to make Todd Souza so mad because it doesn't, from what I saw from the replay, it didn't seem like enough to be that mad about. Now, I might have been a little irked about it, but not enough to just come off a of turn four and just hook a right and turn him to the inside. So, I don't know. I, I don't think we got the full picture there, but at the same time, that is what happened. Three cars spent time out front in this race. Sammy Smith led the most laps with 79 laps led, 43 laps were led by Taylor Gray, and 32 laps were led by Daniel Dye. So clearly, one of those three cars won this race. And we mentioned either Sammy Smith or Taylor Gray faded late in this race. Now, before we get into the results and we talk about who won this race, I do want to give a shout out to Mav TV. I have been one to somewhat criticized their broadcasts in recent years. They've been a little hit or miss here or there on the coverage they've given for these ARCA races. I just want to give a big shout out to, to that, that whole team at MAV-TV. 
this is one of the best, probably the best MAV TV broadcast I've seen in years for an Arkham and Art series race between Krista Kelly, Jim Trado, and Mike Massaro on pit road. So good to see Mike Massaro back at the track. He is a fantastic pit reporter. So good to see him uh, bringing his wealth of knowledge and experience to the Arkham and Art series. I think that was definitely a breath of fresh air and good to see him on pit road. That is something that I think was sorely lacking in MAV TV broadcast, and it's good to see him there. And Krista Kelly, I thought, actually did a fantastic job uh, doing play by play. So, all around, I think it was really good broadcast. So, kudos to MAV TV on that. Just wanted to throw that in there before we get into the results. All right, Taylor Gray, Daniel Dye, Sammy Smith. Who won this race? Well, Sammy Smith was actually the one to fade late in this race. For the first probably two thirds of this race, he was the car to beat. Taylor Gray was right there with him. It's not like he had run away with it. Those two swapped the lead a lot in the early going, especially with all those early cautions. One of them would get the lead on a restart. The next restart 10 laps later, the other one would retake the lead. Sammy Smith, though, did mention after the race that his car got extremely tight late in the race, and he wasn't sure why. That is why he ended up fading late and was not in the conversation for the win. So it came down to Taylor Gray and Daniel Dye. Daniel Dye actually led very late in this race, but actually that final caution that sent us to overtime, that was what lost him this race. And Taylor Gray was able to retake the lead on that final overtime restart and win this race, which was a very emotional victory after the very unfortunate accident that happened with the DGR team hauler on the way to this race earlier this week in Texas losing the life of one of the co-drivers of that hauler, Steven Stotts, and injuring the other co-drivers in the hauler as well, as well as the driver of the vehicle that the hauler struck. So very good to see Taylor Gray come out and win this race in such an emotional way. Even he was choked up in victory lane. It, it, it was just a big night for that DGR team, and I was so happy to see them able to cap off this night and bring home the victory in what had to be hard for them just to go to the track to to load up that car they had to stick it in haley deegan's truck series hauler to get the car to the track had it all black no decals no sponsorship except for the contingency sponsors in honor of the late stephen stotts very very cool to see that 17 team pick up the victory in this race so let's look at the rest of your results from this race of course taylor gray is your winner daniel die came home in second felt like that one slipped away from him late in the race but i'm sure he's going to have many more this season coming to him that 43 team has been extremely fast to start this season and i see no reason why they won't be fast as we get further into the season i really think it's going to be hard to beat him for this championship this year he has been so fast since stepping foot into that GMS car. Sammy Smith rallied to third, although had fallen as far back as I believe fifth there in the late laps, but picked up a couple spots on the final restart. Raja Karuth came out of nowhere in those final few laps, settled into fourth, but was as high as second, and really was not a factor most of this race. Ran around fifth or sixth most of the race, but in those final few laps, started picking off spots on restarts and kept picking off spots until he was in second and really put himself in position to win this race. Unfortunately, didn't come away with it, but very impressive run from Raja Karuth. And a solid top five run from Jake Drew, flying the banner for the West Series in this race. And very impressive to see just a West Series car in general in the top five in this race. The West cars, for whatever reason, don't usually have quite as much speed as the main ARCA cars and the East cars when they do these combo races. So good to see Jake Drew being that competitive in this race. Rest of your top 10, Jesse Love, Nick Sanchez, Josh Berry running the 17 car for Steve McGowan, Derek Krause, the highest running BMR Chevy in this race, and Connor Mozak rounds out the top 10 in the 23 car for Brett Holmes. 11th through 20th, Cole Moore lands in 11th. Good run for him in his BMR Chevy, the number 99 Chevrolet. Todd Souza spins across the line at the checkered flag to finish in 12th. Joey East 13th, Austin Herzog, Rebounded from his spin to finish 14th. Tony Bridinger rounded up the top 15 for Venturini Motorsports. Tanner Reef, after getting spun by Todd Souza, landed in 16th. And Parker Chase rounds out the top 20 in the 15 for Venturini. 21st through 30th, Alex Club landed in 21st. 
Bridget Burgess there in 23rd, and Amber Balkan rounds out the top 30. She was involved in a crash late and unfortunately would not be able to finish the race. 31st through 39th final page, Brad Smith landed in 34th. Greg Van Alst after his early spin landed 36th. So that's your results from the General Tire 150 working on a Taylor Gray interview. Not 100% sure when that will be, but keep an eye out for that in the coming week. Make sure you're subscribed and your notifications are turned on so you know exactly when that comes your way. Let's take a quick look at your main Arkham Menard Series point standings following this race. The West standings, it's their first race. Not much to really look at there. We know Jake Drew's the points leader because he was the highest West driver, or effectively the points leader. Technically, he's fifth right now, but he's effectively the West Series points leader. But there's really no need to look at that right now because you're going to have all these main ARCA cars in there convoluting it up, and it's it's just going to look like the results for this race, and most of those cars aren't West cars, so it's not going to do us really any good to look at that. So let's look at the main ARCA points after two races. Daniel Dye now is your leader after two races, 11 points over Raja Karuth. Parker Chase actually sits in the third position, 18 points back. Tony Bridinger fourth, 20 back. 23 back is Nick Sanchez in fifth and then you see the rest of the top 10 there Corey heim taylor gray sammy smith amber balkan and sean core that's your point standings following phoenix and i believe that'll do it for us on this edition of the arca rewind show the main arca menard series may be off until april 23rd for talladega but we do have east and west racing between now and then five flag speedway in pensacola coming up this weekend on saturday 7 p.m central 8 p.m eastern That'll be, of course, on Flow Racing Mav TV. Of course, we'll have coverage for you. Rewind show, live post-race show, all that. Won't be at the track. <laughs> Not really sure if or when or if we're going to be at the track next uh, with gas prices looking like they are. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. Maybe a lot less at the track coverage this year than what we planned on, uh, given how things are looking right now. If you want to sit more races and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. The more subscriptions we get, the, the higher that goes, closer we get to being able to put ads on here, making money off of it, and being able to pour that money back into going to at the track coverage. So if you're not subscribed yet and you want to see more at the track coverage, hit that subscribe button. Of course, the West Series will be back March 26th. Doc is being very loud right now with his ball with a bell. West Series is back March 26th at Irwindale. That, of course, also on Flow Racing. Did I say the East Race was on Mav TV? That is not true. It is only on Flow Racing. Doc is distracting me with his bell ball, ball bell, whatever it is. Just on Flow Racing for the East and the West races. You probably know that, but if not, just, just to reiterate, the Mav TV races are only main arcus here. So I believe that's going to do it now as this has gone completely off the rails. I've lost my train of thought. I have no idea what's going on right now. So we want to thank our Patreon supporter, regional manager, William Holmes. Thank you as always for your support. It really is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to be a patron of r and the link is down below in the description. Patreon.com slash Racing News Now. Not required by any means, but definitely appreciated when you want to support r and that way. And that also does help get us to more races as well. Just keep that in mind if you're on the fence about that. But I believe that's going to do it. So, at that, this has been the Arkham Menard Series Rewind Show. I'm Garth Allen for Racing News Now.